This is Elena Milikova, her third and final jump. Well, she's really swinging out wide, Dan, waiting for this moment when the opportune window opens for her to cut at that ramp. Remember, this is ski flying, reaching speeds over 60 miles an hour. Oh, she oh. kicks a good one. How far did the Russian fly? That's the question. 221 feet. That is a new world's record. Oh, and she is so excited because she knows she didn't just one foot an old record of 217. She obliterated it. This is Emma Shears, the Australian, looking to take back the world record that Elena Melikova just took from her. Oh, and she goes for it. No holds barred. She heads off the top of the ramp over 65 miles an hour. Was, Was it, it enough? good enough? 220, she is one foot shy, one foot shy. Welcome to the 43rd Masters. Now this is where it all took place yesterday. Elena Melikova and Emma Shears launching themselves off this ramp, one of them right into the record books here at Robin Lake. These two young women traveled halfway around the world to get everybody talking about the finals. Hello everybody and welcome. Dan Debenham along with Dave Benzel. And Dave, everybody's talking about these international superstars right now. One from Russia, one from Australia. But what's really amazing about their performances is that Emma Shears has been ski flying for a little over two years now. Elena Melikova, a traditional jumper and a world champion, just made the switch to ski flying three weeks ago. And look how far she's going already. How far can they go today? We'll find the answer out in just a little bit. Now, I know you had an opportunity earlier today to talk with both of them. Elena, it must be exciting for you to come out here. I know you've only been ski flying about three weeks, and you break the world record. Tell us about that. Well, of course, it's very exciting. And especially when Emma jumped to 20, you know, after my jump to 21, it was even more exciting. And I'm sure today it's going to be very interesting to watch. It's good competition. It is going to be interesting. Now, on any other day, that would have been a world record-breaking jump for you. And yet it ends up being 220, and it's not a world record. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit disappointing, I guess, that it wasn't the world record. But at the same time, I was really happy with the set of jumps that I put together. And uh, yeah, looking forward to booting out a big one today. And uh, I get to go out before her now. So uh, that's going to be, I'll put a bit of pressure on her today instead of the other way around, hopefully. All right, well, we'll be watching that shootout. Sounds good. Well, Jeff Barton joins us now, and we are going to talk about wakeboarding in just a bit. But, Dave, I want to ask you about the rest of those traditional events here at the Masters. Who do we look for in those events? Well, of course, men and women slum is a favorite of a lot of fans, but it's impossible to predict who might win there. It's just a big shootout. Look at the dichotomy of the ages in men's tricks, though. Jimmy Seamers, 20 years old, is the top seed, going against a 38-year-old Corey Picos. Corey skied his first Masters before Jimmy was even born. On the women's side, Brigitte Latham, a skier from France, skiing in her first Masters ever. In ski flying on the men's side, look out. Three men could break the 299 world record. There's Freddy Krueger, Jarrett Llewellyn, and Scott Ellis, and they're all going for it. Boy, I'll tell you, it seems like it's going to be a great day for flying. Thanks, Dave. All right, Jeff, speaking of flying, the wakeboarders went off yesterday. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's harder to define a world championship run in the sport of wakeboarding. But I'll tell you what, the run that was put forth yesterday by Danny Harf, many suggest that it was the greatest competitive pass ever performed here at the Masters. It was outstanding. But take a look who's going to be joining him in that finals. Parks Bonifay, commonly thought of as the greatest free rider of all time. Also, we go to Australia, we're bringing over Brett Eisenhower, and then Eric Ruck is rounding out that field of four. On the women's side of the game, last year's 2001 Masters champion, Emily Copeland. She is up to her game even further. She did her strongest run of all time out here yesterday. But you know what? She knows her job isn't done, Dan. She wants to come back and add one more title here at the Masters. You know, I think to both of you gentlemen, you agree that there's something about the Masters. It just elevates the game of the top riders, the top professionals in the world. And that's why we're here. 50 years ago, Callaway was formed. For 43 years, the Masters has been right here at Robin Lake. And we get set, and hope you do too, as we present the 43rd Masters. And what a beautiful Memorial Day weekend that we have here. Memorial Day is traditionally the day that the beach activities open up here at Callaway, the 50th season here at Callaway. And we're watching Brigitte Latham, the first competitor in the gymnastics version of water skiing. 
where the skier produces a series of 360, 540 degree, even 720 degree turns on the tiniest stage, a single trick ski. No fin on that ski. Watch her cut back and forth. As she hits the wake, the trick must be done in the air. On the surface, it must be continuous, and she stands up a full 20 seconds of twisting and turning. Well, there's Ronnie Barton, a former Masters champion. She's waiting to go next. Brigitte, 3760 for her first pass. Here she comes for pass number two. Unlike the first pass, the handle will be in her hands throughout this pass, and she'll do the same kinds of tricks, but she's holding on to the handle. Stepping over the line, now she puts her back foot in. We'll watch for some 540s coming up here. There's one, a 540 to the front, and the reverse of that trick. She's tricking very cleanly, although I must say these are not real difficult tricks. Whoa! And she goes way out of position on this flip. It would have been a great high-scoring trick, but she missed it. Now, and so the total score is 5,920 points as we now get ready to look at Ronnie Barton. Now, she has been here since her teenage years. Yes, and she has a more difficult program. She starts out in the toe strap here. And you'll see some toe stepovers coming up. There's a reverse toe 360. I think it's a little later in her program. She's really smooth and she moves quickly. Here comes the toe stepover. It should be right here. 360 degrees in the air and steps over the line. And going down right at the end, but I think it was after the 20 seconds. Should be a good score. Total score of 6,640 points. Elena Melikova. Boy, yesterday, what an incredible performance in the ski flying competition. We can't wait to see her today later on in the finals. But let's focus on her tricks. She is such an athlete and a well-rounded athlete, built perfectly for trick skiing, training in Spain and also in Florida. This is the toehold 720, two complete revolutions. And look how quickly and smoothly she moves from one trick to another. She has the hardest program of anyone here in the competition. Now she wraps in, wraps back out. Oh, and steps over the line. Great move. Everything so cleanly. This is a precision athlete. And she nails that pass. Boy, look, there's almost this sigh of relief. 3,730 points for that first pass. Here she comes in her second pass now. This is unusual. She has two toe tricks in the second pass, and the rest of them are all hand tricks. So she takes her foot out of the toe strap and now goes into the 540s getting great air on each trick. Oh, jumping over the line, big point trick. And another one. All right, here comes the flip, a little short, but she made it, oh, really short on the second one, so she will not get that. Is it good enough, though, to beat Ronnie Barton? First or second place is on the line. There's the total, 70-60. Elena Melikova is our winner. Elena, congratulations. A repeat victory from last year, another Masters Trick title. As you stood on the dock and you watched Ronnie Barton fall at the end of her first pass, were you thinking anything that that might help you? Yeah, I was thinking because my program is quite difficult and, uh, and to me it was very important to see other girls, to know what they're doing and uh, you know, to decide if I have to do all my program or if I have to make it a bit easier. So and after Ronnie's pass, which was not bad, nice, uh, I've decided to do all my pass the way I, you know, difficult. And it worked, and I'm very happy. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Elena Milikova, very busy, adding the Trix title to her new world record that she set yesterday in the women's ski fly. The Masters is being brought to you by Chevy Trucks. Chevy Trucks, like a rock. By Rolex, the watch of champions the world over. By Nautiques, life is short, live it. And by Vortec, uncompromised power on land or water. Chevy Trailblazer.
Everything else just seems kind of weak. The 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. Life is short. Live it. Happy 50th to Callaway, celebrating 50 years. And this is the Day Butterfly Center, one of the many things that you can experience here at Callaway. And welcome back to Robin Lake, the 43rd Masters. Dan Debenham, along with Dave Benzel, and this is Corey Picos. 38 years young, Dave, as we take a look at the tricks competition. And here's something amazing you can watch this guy dancing back and forth across the wakes. He'll be jumping over the line here pretty soon. There's one, toe step 360, toe step back. Look at how fast he goes. He gets more tricks per pass in this 20 seconds than anyone in the field. Recovery after recovery, and he makes it through the 20 seconds. That fall was out of course. That's why he has won so many titles. 9,260 points, is that good enough for a title here at the Masters? Challenging him now, Jarrett Llewellyn. This is a guy who spends the majority of the year ski flying, and about two weeks before the Masters puts on his trick ski, which he used to specialize in back when he was younger in the boys' division, comes out here and look at the tricks that he does. He is such a gifted athlete. Front <laughs> flip, back flip, now the reverse, I think. Yep, there's the reverse flip. Now let's see what he does. Flip with a twist, and the reverse flip with a twist. A backwards landing, and another backwards landing. I think that's why the wakeboarders will let him hang with them, man. Yeah, he anybody looks... who can do six flips in a single pass. 10,650 points, so he vaults himself into first place. Can Jimmy Seamers overtake him, though? Now, he's going to do his toe hold pass first. He's not as fast as Corey Picos. He does some of the same tricks, but you'll notice his, his turn rate, his spin rate's much slower. He is more natural at the flips than he is at toe tricks, so he's working hard through here. This doesn't come as easily for Jimmy. But a gifted athlete, yes. Same kind of hard tricks, jumping over the line. Do you know the leg strength it takes to do that right there? Pull my, it pulled my leg right out of its socket, let me tell you. You're using your leg as if it's an arm. And he is in first place right now, 10,680 points. One final trick skier left on the water, Nicolas Lafourstier. He is the defending champion for a good reason. He is so focused. He is so determined when he comes here to Callaway. And many times, he has been the winner. Whoa, big trick. 540 degrees and going over the line. Now a flip. He'll go into all his flips probably together here. Yep, here comes another one with the back landing. He'll do the reverse here. And from back to back. Oh, he is really racing against the clock. Oh, incredible performance. Hardest trick of the pass was the last one. Boy, and he seems so determined. What a terrific opening pass, 6,700 points. In just one pass. Let's see if he can hold it together now. He's got to get through the next 20 seconds. Starting out with a couple easy surface tricks here. Wrapping in, now going out over the wake, and yes, toe step. Wrapping in, he'll go out again, and over the rope again. And again, oh, he's right on target. Formerly, he was criticized for not being as clean, but today he is right on the money. I don't see a single trick the judges could take. This could be something special. We are waiting for the scores. And he is looking to the scoreboard out there in the middle of Robin Lake. Look at that, 11,520 points. That is a new course record. Take a look at his wife there in the boat. She knows as well. Absolutely superb performance. Another little sign this morning, and it was going to be a good day. Michael, my younger son, took his first steps on the pavilion. So for the first time, he started walking. We waited, we've been waiting for that for nearly six months, and that was this morning. So I knew that it was going to be something good. So I said, I'm going to just fall in my son's first step and just try to stand up. Hey, that's great. Winners all the way around. And something his young son will always remember. Congratulations. Still to come, the women's slalom competition. But up next, the men. We ready to go? Yeah. Who's driving? I'm driving. Uh -oh. oh, man, I'm driving. Man. No way. Got it. 
It's a picture-perfect weekend here at Callaway. For the fans and for the competitors, as we get set for the slalom competition, Dave, take us through what these flags mean. Why the different colors? What makes slalom so difficult is that every time you run six buoys, they shorten the rope. So each flag indicates a new rope shortening. Off of a 75-foot rope, they pull rope into the boat, and you go to 28 feet off the yellow flag, 32 feet off the green flag, and so on. This is Chris Parrish at 38 off a, st a standard 75-foot rope length. Of course, at this rope length, he barely reaches the buoy because the rope is six inches shorter than the distance from the center of the course. And look at him go. Chris Parrish is running this pass, no problem. Tight line, there was no slack there. Wow, that looked easy. Yeah, he really did look dialed in. So much of this is mental, isn't it, as you get ready for this? It's, yeah, and there goes the changing of the flag. Now we know we're going to 39 and a half off. Mental in the sense that you have to stay focused on each buoy as you're there and not get ahead of yourself. Here's the second buoy at 39 and a half off. Third buoy, he's in great shape, coming into four. Can he run it? Oh, oh. he pops the handle as he goes through the wakes. He should get four full buoys for that. And I think he's surprised. He, again, what you were saying, he was looking so good, and it's just he lost the handle. Single mistake is costly. Four buoys at 39 and a half off. Will that be enough as Andy Mapple, a 13-time Masters champion, a co-world record holder, is now on course? Interesting strategy. He has skipped the 35 off pass and gone right to 38. He wants to run 39 from the other end of the lake. Oh, he's in good shape here. Now, this guy has done this in his sleep. He's done it so many times. He's won here so many times. Confidence has to be on his side. Experience is on his side for sure. Yeah, no problem at that, at that pass. Now, up goes the white flag. 39 and a half off now. Now, he's got to get a good start. Everything begins with the gate and number one. He's out there, he took, oh! oh! Slid out! Yes, the fin came right out of the water. He climbed up on the front of the ski just too much and popped it out. That is a disaster for Andy Mapple. That is unusual for this co-world record holder. Chris Parrish has to wonder now, what are my chances? Well, he just dodged a very big bullet. Good point. Think of it, Andy Mapple has won the last five Masters in a row. <laughs> Yeah, and he's one of the fan favorites, too. And he is out just a half buoy at 39 and a half off. Jamie Boucher now from New Hampshire. He has already run the 38 off pass. He's got to get a good one. He's a left foot forward skier. Usually means that's a good one ball turn for him. Unusual style, digging in real low with his knees. Here is ball three. Oh, oh. and he skips out at ball three, much like Andy did at ball one. A score of two and a half, not enough to catch Chris. So Chris Parrish remains our leader still. One more competitor on the water, Steve Cockerham. From New Zealand, very smooth, consistent skier at 38 off. Skiing a little narrow here, just getting around the buoys and a little bit of slack line. See the rope get tight after the buoy? That's not a good thing. Whoa, big jerk coming out of five. Can oh, he get around no. six? No, he does not get around six. And that means that man right there is all wet and is our winner, Chris Parrish. Oh, what could have been for Steve Cockrum, but not on this day. Chris Parrish is our winner. Here's Dave with our champion. Chris, I know how long you have dreamed about this, how long you've worked for this. I mean, oh, it has man. been a long haul. What an amazing long haul. I mean, from the injury last year with people stepping up to the plate, uh, you know, Jim Shane is skiing unbelievable. Uh, but, you know, Lucky, Lucky Low made a comment. The, the book was already written. The story was already written. I just had to sit back and see what's going to happen. And it turned out for me today to be the day for me to win, thanks to God. So. Yeah. It was a big win today. Alicia, I guess you share his excitement. You've been watching on the sidelines. Very excited, very excited. We've been waiting for this, and, and it came true, so we're pretty excited. Congratulations. Thanks, All the way from, I remember, Junior Boys, oh, man. man. The Junior Masters losing by half a ball, and then tying Andy uh, two years ago, and then winning this is just, uh, it's exhilarating. It feels so good. It's just weight off your shoulders. And this, you know, I go back home now. I want to thank my sponsors for this. and go back home and start training you know, even harder for the next one. 
That's O'Brien Ski right here is doing a great job for me too. And I want to thank my major sponsor, O'Brien. The ski is just feeling great. It's worth all the hard work, isn't it? For sure, for sure. So, I love you, baby. Up next, who will win when it comes to the women? In 1935, Foxwood Farms started with one horse and a truck. The horse was a thoroughbred, the truck a Chevy Suburban. Today, they have a few more horses, but there's still only one truck, Chevy Suburban. With an available 8.1 liter Vortec engine, it's capable of towing up to six tons, making it the best Suburban yet. Chevy Suburban, like a rock. Life is short. Live it. And welcome back for the 43rd Masters Water Ski Tournament here at Callaway in Pine Mountain, Georgia. Dan Debenham along with Dave Benzel, truly a beautiful location. In 1952, Cason and Virginia Callaway opened Callaway Gardens for the people in this general area. It was a drive-through woodland garden. Uh, with golf and fishing and uh, one of the things that that Kaysen realized was that they needed activities for the entire family so one of the first attractions was Robin Lake and the beach area so that families could come and picnic and swim and have really just have a great time but the, the gardens itself uh, is just sort of a restoration of what was at one time worn out cotton fields and corn fields one of the overall missions of Callaway is a, a, a wonderful place for families to come and have a, a great place to have recreation and also to have a better understanding of a living world. So even though you may be skiing, you may be fishing, you may be swimming, you may be golfing, you may be playing tennis, whatever you're doing, we hope that there's a subtle message of a better understanding of, of the world around you and also uh, that you help to preserve this, this world and keep it, keep it, <laughs> make it better, perhaps. As you can well imagine, one of the most important people in a tournament is the boat driver. Les Todd, 17 years driving the Masters. You must feel some pressure coming into an event like this. Oh, day I tell you, a lot of pressure. Um, you know, the skiers kind of get up for one, you know, for their event, but i got to get up for every one of them. But I tell you, in those years that I've been driving, I tell you, the engine that we have now today, this GM Vortex 6000 engine, and, and seriously, you can get this in your truck now, uh, but we've got a supercharged version here, and uh, it is the smoothest driving engine I've ever had uh, in a boat in the years I've been driving. And this thing comes up with like 500 horsepower, over 500 pounds of torque. And when this guy goes, I can give all the power to the ski flyer uh, to really let him go. So. Uh, there is a lot of pressure, but I tell you what, GM and the, with the help of PCM and Craft, well, they have really got a super engine here for us. And it's that engine right now that is driving Emma Shears and the rest of the women as we get set for the women's slalom competition. Emma Shears, one of those gifted athletes who skis in the slalom event as well as ski fly, and you can see why. Look at the strength that it takes to accelerate through the wakes, get around this buoy at 35 off. Ooh, a little slack there, she handled it well. Little narrow at number six, no problem. She needed that pass for sure. Six full buoys then at 35 off. Coming in now at 38 off. It's hard to even get wide before the course at this rope length. Oh, she just barely got around number one, pulling all the way to two. She hooks it, hanging on for dear life oh. and blows the fin out there. So narrow at the third buoy. She had all she could do to get the ski around it. Will that be enough, though, to win the title here? We have the best women in the world competing in this competition. This is the Masters. Two and a half buoys at 38 off. That is the mark to beat. Christy Overton, a five-time Masters slalom champion, world champion, 
father and mother, legendary in this sport. Christy's been struggling this season. She's had some physical problems. She's had some injuries. Uh, at one point, even had some trouble with her ski. She wasn't satisfied with it. Usually turns both sides very evenly. You can see she's running late here, down course on every buoy. But the strength of her pull keeps her in the ball game. Around six, although she's late, she ran that pass. She's going to try to run earlier on the next one. But you know, even though she was late, she makes it look so easy. There goes the flag. So we know now we're moving up to 38 off. The boat speed, 34 miles an hour. Dad getting a little antsy, wouldn't you say? <laughs> There's Parker <laughs> leaning in. Come on, honey. Oh, you can hear him cheering her on. Here comes Christy Overton Johnson going to hit high speeds through the wakes and then shut it down and get slowed down for the turn. Hook up and go. Around two. Again, a little slack. She's running late at three. So late, as a matter of fact, she can't make the turn. Well, she can't make the turn, but that is enough right now to put her in first place temporarily. And well, I don't think she thinks that that's going to be no, enough. No, you can tell right yeah. now. She's reading the tea leaves, and she says Karen True Love is out next, and I think she can beat that. Three buoys at 38 off. That is the mark to beat. This is Karen True Love. At 35 off, she will get a nice start here. Right foot forward skier, which means this offside turn. Oh! oh! I was about to say that is the turn that is her offside turn, and she blew the tail right out. What a surprise, and what a pleasant surprise for Christy Overton Johnson. Not the way you wanted it, but you got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Emotional moment, huh, Dad? Oh, yeah, she won it so bad. Had it about six times now, so it's, it's a special. Yeah. Masters victories, you never get tired of those, do you? No, and you hate to win it like that. Like I said, I didn't feel like I skied well, and like I said, it's so rolly, and she's just been skiing unreal. I know she's on fire, and, and I know she's very disappointed, but. Karen's great. There's six great girls out there. I mean, and a couple of them went down early yesterday. So, it, but all of them are doing great. But you don't like to win it, you know, when somebody goes down early. I have to ask you this question. Is this possibly the last ride for Christy Overton Johnson on Robin Lake? I don't know. I told my husband if I won, it was done. But I also told my son if I won, I got a, he got a pool. So, <laughs> and I don't think he's going to get a pool. So, I don't know. You know, I, you just, you're hurt and you just wonder when's enough, and that was the sixth one, so now you wonder should you go for seven, because I think that was the most wins for a woman's slalom skier. Oh, and I, you know, I was just, I'm just really pleased, and I just praise God that he brings me back after every surgery and gives me the strength to do it again. Congratulations. Still, still the greatest place in the world right here today. We've been here since 1979 when I was hoping she'd get invited. She got invited at 13, and they skipped her at 14, and she won it at 15, so. It's just great to be here. It's been 10 years since my first win, so. Wow. <laughs> Old geezer. What a great career. Congratulations. Thanks. Many consider them the first family of water skiing. When we come back, Jeff Barton joins me for wakeboarding. Welcome back. Wakeboarding's coming up, but what about the evolution of the sport? Here's Jeff Barton. Every year, the design gurus at the different board companies are trying to come out with that next evolutionary, make their brand more unique and revolutionize riding. The last couple of years, it's been in not the overall length and width, but it's in fin configuration. Check me out here. Most of you riders at home are familiar with a board model like this, single fin design. Notice the height of that fin. It's only got one point of stability. You need more surface area to make that rider all comfortable atop the water. But next, they've moved into something like this. Check it out, twin fin configurations. You're gonna notice two small fins on the outside. That's for giving you stability when you're burying that rail. But if that's not enough, the good folks at Liquid Force have even come up with a trifecta fin model right here, the Liquid Force Trip. We're dealing with a longer fin base than we saw on the twin fin, yet a shorter overall fin, one in the center. It's great for stability when the rider has to get on his back foot, but it loosens up and rotates nicely when they get their weight centered back on there. And here's for the ultimate free ride board. This is a actual misnomer in the sport of wakeboarding. They call it a finless board, but what it is, in fact, it's a molded fin board. Look, 
Nothing's coming in and half. That's permanent in there, Daddy. But what it does is it allows the rider to have stability when he's going back. The hydrodynamics will hold it in place. But when he wants to pop, he gets on the center of the board, and that board will definitely go big. You are amazing. A virtual plethora of information when it comes to this sport. Tell me about Lauren Lowe. Here she is. Young lady coming out of Texas. Her style of riding is definitely meant for going big. We've seen two efforts from her here on pass number two. First rider coming off the dock. She is setting the benchmark by which the rest are gonna be measured in this finals, Dan. Looking pretty good. Boy, she's real slight of frame, but that kind of exaggerates her tricks, doesn't it? It sure does. Again, her diminutive stature really make every move look that much bigger. And we saw great variation. Unfortunately, one variation you don't want is the dropped handle. No, no. 46.25, doubtful that that will be enough. Here's Tara Hamilton now. Well, here's a girl whose reputation totally precedes her. You know what? For the second year in a row, she's chosen to use the Masters as her coming out party. Again, she's been battling some ankle injuries, but she's still taking everything big. There's her scarecrow. Now she's going to switch it back around and have a nice heel side approach, throwing that tantrum. She looks like she's in mid-season form, even though she's just getting back on the water for the first time in competition. Yeah, but Jeff, I got to tell you, her her tricks, they seem the same. They don't seem to have changed from the last couple of seasons. <laughs> well, Dan, it's her prerogative to choose her run as she wishes. But I'll tell you what, reverting to the old runs, that's not going to win. Certainly not here at the Masters. But this, this may win the Raft KGB full 360 degree rotation inverted. That is some exciting riding. And then smoothly back, toe side back roll, throws the 180 in there. Megan Major, she took a year off last year just trying to get herself back together, and it looks like that time off has served her well. Well, this is Megan Major's second pass. The half cab roll, she's throwing spins, she's throwing those mobs. Composition is a very important element of getting scored. Look at that big smile. She's stoked, they're stoked, I'm stoked. That's going to be the best score thus far. 58.11, it is. That's why you're the expert analyst. We're going to rev it up and we're going to get ready to go. We're coming back at you with Emily Copeland, the defending women's wakeboarding champion. And let me tell you, Dan, this is her event to lose. Megan rode great, but I'll tell you, look at that, Emily, just a little bit more explosive. Look at her physical stature. She's a big, strong rider. She could go out there and hold back right now and bring herself a championship, but that's not her style. She is trying to push the sport of women's wakeboarding, evolving the sport, heel side edge, and that is what's doing it. The off-axis 360. That is a contemporary move among the men's. She's the only women's rider that is throwing that, coming back across a Tootsie Roll. She is not she is not holding back. It could be a sandbag effort out here, Dan, but she is out here not trying to just win a competition, but show everybody what she's capable of. Well, let me tell you, there's a rumor floating around here that she could actually compete with the top pro men out there. Well, there definitely has been some discussion that at some of the other events going around that she might go in there and try to qualify in as a wild card. And I'll tell you, she's got the game off axis 540 right there. We're not seeing that from any of the other women. Dan, this, this heat already might have been won. Backside roll right there. She has thrown three moves that the others aren't throwing. Combine that with the seven other solid chicks, and we have ourselves a new champ. You bet Emily Copeland is the 2002 Women's Wakeboarding Champion. When we come back, the men take go, to Robin go, Lake. Go, 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 let's go, let's go. That's if they can get there on time. There they are. We'll be back <laughs> after this. They're always late. Chevy Trailblazer. Everything else just seems kind of weak. The 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock.
Life is short. Live it. Welcome back to the Masters. Dan Debenham along with Jeff Barton as we continue with our wakeboarding competition. This is Eric Rock for the men. Well, he's coming to you from Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. It is just a testament to his skills that he's even here. Yesterday's preliminary round, so grueling, that meant these guys had oh. to go out there and just explode, and he's doing it again today. Huge front flip, grabbing it method. Now coming <laughs> back, a little more technical, grabbing that half cap roll, mute. Eric is starting to string it together. Now we see him go with the move again. Composition of the run, throwing spins, throwing moves. He is really riding soft, the 720. Oh, just, just missed that handle pass. The handle. And it brought him glory yesterday. Today pops that handle. 45.70, he is our leader, but this man is looking mighty good, Brett Eisenhower. Yeah, year after year, this kid has climbed the ranks and his calling card is big, explosive oh. riding. Look at that, how stoked are the people on the beach? The humongous Espen. Now, again, a heel side edge coming the other way. That was switch stance, a half cab roll, 20, 30 feet beyond that wake. Ike is really starting to feel the groove. He too throws the slim chance. And we got to compare it to the one Ruck just threw. That was a little bit bigger and a lot more clean. The bat wing, again, great composition. We're seeing mobs. We're seeing the inverts coming in toe side edge. That's a switch stance spin, 540 degrees. Yeah, you ought to be stoked, Ike. <laughs> you know, speaking of big, the crowds are big. Yeah. yeah so is his hair. That's pretty big hair he's got. <laughs> All right, Danny Harf, now you spoke about him at the top of the show, had one of the great rides of all time yesterday, and yet he is not last out on the water. Well, you know, he was the winner of the first heat, so he got the number two seed coming in right now. His run, though, yesterday, it was insane, regardless of how they picked the order. Oh, look at that, the Pete Rose. It looks like he might be back in yesterday's form here today, because Danny is really charging oh. 720. Oh, pops the handle. He was going for it though, and that's what it's about riding here in the finals. Pops the handle and opens the door then with a 55 total. That puts him in second place. This man can win it all. Oh, the hair farmer, Parks Boniface. You know, he's been around competing professionally since the age of 13. He's had the good fortune of watching everybody. He's gonna be able to compose a run of everything he knows that he can do. Two stand-up Parks Boniface passes. This could be home and host for him. And look at the crowd. Everybody has out their camcorders. Everybody wants a picture of what could be the next champion here at Robin Lake. Oh, you definitely want to keep an eye on the freak show, throwing that scarecrow mope, coming back across the whirly bird. The thing about Parks, look at this. Everything is linked together. Everything looks like it's setting up for the next move. Coming in, heel side edge. Oh, he turns it late to blind and then just tic tacs back around into the wake again. Toe side to wake, Indy Pope. Oh, Parks is just looking smooth as butter. Wow, all right, second pass. Well, we saw him going technical on the first one. Here he's starting with the big wow. explosive S Ben. Look at his grimace out there. That's a guy who's having a great time, yet he's at the top of the professional pier right now. You know, Jeff, I'm just wondering how his head bandana's staying on. I mean, that's... That's, that's a professional, Dan. Look at him. I mean, everything's got to look good. It's all about the vanity while you're ripping at the Masters. <laughs> oh, switch dance, slob front flip. Parks, again, like we said with Emily earlier, he may already have this thing won. Oh, goes up there. Method grab on that method glide. Oh, Parks, he might have just gotten himself a Masters title, and he still gets the double up. Here comes the double up. They, The boat creates the big wake. They get the big air, and here it goes. Oh, yeah! Oh. Did you, you see the bandana go away in the breeze? The double half cab roll. That's the man. Give it to the boy. That's the title holder. Parks Bonifay picks up yet another Masters Wakeboard Championship, and he knows it. Man, I'll tell you, I don't know if it was strategy or what. He didn't really go out there and throw everything that he could possibly have thrown, but he put together a great run. Oh, and now taking the body for the sake of the crowd. P. Diddy does it again. Oh, yeah. Parks Bonifay, you know, never mind the fact that you just won the 2002 Pro Men's Masters Championship. I want to talk to you about the fashion and the hairstyle. Who gets your getup going, and how did that inspire you today? Uh, I've been growing up for a year. Decided to bring back the fro. It's all aerodynamics. I had my headband. We lost it on the double. That's probably why I made it. Well, let's go back to that, Parks. Your run 
flawless, outstanding, somewhat conservative for you, but you certainly punctuated it. Walk us through your double up. Uh, we well, overturned it a little bit, so it's going to be a lot steeper. That's usually how I like him on that side, so get a good kick. And I don't know, the only, the only thing I remember is my headband coming off. And before you know, I was just stuck in it. I was just like, holy beep. From wakeboarding to world records, ski flying is coming up, and Elena Melikova is focused. In 1935, Foxwood Farm started with one horse and a truck. The horse was a thoroughbred, the truck a Chevy Suburban. Today, they have a few more horses, but there's still only one truck, Chevy Suburban. With an available 8.1 liter Vortec engine, it's capable of towing up to six tons, making it the best Suburban yet. Chevy Suburban, like a rock. Life is short. Live it. This amazing resort is celebrating 50 years. Congratulations to Callaway. Hey, buddy, turn around. We got women ski fly. This is Ronnie Barton. The boat speed, 41 miles an hour. She turns and comes close to doubling her speed. She'll hit 65 miles an hour and hit this slick ramp. And we stood up there, Dan, you and I know how fast and slippery that ramp is. Yeah, and how tall it is, that's what amazed me. I mean, you are really up there. Imagine when you're at the apex of that jump. Yeah, it's just under six feet high. It's around 5'11", and there's a 177. And I'm gonna call that kind of a warm-up jump for her. Emma Shears keeping a careful eye on things. Ronnie Barton has turned in a personal best of 199, but I will tell you she might be a little intimidated by the fact that there is a tailwind right now, and that is not a ski flyer's friend. Yeah, sitting back a little bit, you see on, on her heels. Yeah, I think just she's like protecting. A, like a plane, you, you want to go into the wind, just like a plane. You want that to help you with create the lift. Elena Melikova getting ready. She's our new world record holder. Here's the third and final jump for Ronnie Barton. Can she get on her toes and take advantage of the lift? No. In fact, she sat back even more so. Yeah, that caused her to just slide out, and that's her worst jump of the day. 136, 177, her first jump, the best jump. But there's a good look at the flag, and it is blowing with the skiers. And as you said, that's not really what they want to see right now. No, it pushes them down, and it also uh, scares them a little bit. You know, like having wind at your back, because it might push the tips down. Wow. Whoa. Well, Emma Shears is not backing off. <laughs> no, she got over the front, the tips of those skis, didn't she? Trying to create height by generating spring off the top of the ramp. 210. Whoa. What a great wow. opening jump over 66 miles an hour, as you saw out there. Well, she really wants to put the pressure on Elena Milikova. Accelerating all the way in and kicking off of that acceleration, oh. another big jump. You just get the feeling that she, she knows she's close. 213 and almost 67 miles an hour now. Marina Mossi, the Italian ski flyer who is not skiing today, even though she qualified, because when she hit the ramp yesterday in preliminary round, she felt something go in her knee, and she's all bandaged up. Can Elena Melikova better her world record that she just set yesterday? Can she win the Masters? Oh, boy, she is so quick off the top. One of the things I notice about her is that she stands up taller all throughout her cut as compared to Emma Shears, not nearly so low. This seems to help her. Well, you get a good idea of how far they're going, a 203, by just looking at those yellow Rolex buoys out there. Those, those tell you the distance out there on the lake. Let's watch her body position because it really tells the story. Locked in, really digging. Look at what great position. Oh, oh! she kicks it. Look, oh! look at the float time. She went past that buoy. I mean, way past that buoy, Dave. Oh, oh, Emma Shears knows it. Look at this. She can tell already as an experienced jumper. She knows how far it was, over 66 miles an hour. Almost 67 miles an hour. But how far did she go? 228. 228. Another world record. 
absolutely incredible. Oh, Dan, this is amazing. When you think that she broke the record yesterday at 221, and the fans appreciate that, but when you can break your own record the very next day and add seven feet, that's unbelievable. Elena Melikova with the new world record. What an incredible performance. 228 feet. Has this sunk into you yet? That's seven feet more than yesterday's world-breaking record. To tell you the truth, I was so afraid because I had so much speed, much more than ever in practice and yesterday. And I just say to myself, hold on, hold on. Don't pass, don't let go. And I'm so happy it worked. It, it, but your lift off the top of the ramp, I mean, it's just so instinctive. You have this wonderful spring, and it's like you never came down. I don't know. I think I have a, I have a good position, and for me, it's not difficult to kick. What is difficult for me is to keep, you know, to hold on this high speed on the ramp. Uh, well, I'm really happy. It's a big surprise to me. The fact that you've only been ski flying for about three weeks, this, this is amazing to me. To me as well. <laughs> really, I didn't expect this year to win anything. I just wanted to be there and to participate and uh, just to compete with other girls, ski flying. And I'm really happy because it worked really well and I won. You were born to ski fly, girl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. What a day to remember here at Robin Lake. Coming up, the throwdown on the lake. The men are next. Where's my map? How do you start this beast? On star. Where's the on star? The Masters is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, like a rock. By Rolex, the watch of champions the world over. By Nautiques, life is short, live it. By Vortec, uncompromised power on land or water. Dan, remember we said that the tailwind was developing more and more severe during the women's jump event. They have decided to rotate the ramp 180 degrees to give the men not only safer jumping conditions, but better jumping conditions. They're going to have a headwind, and they are so pumped up. They are going to have a headwind, but let me ask you, Dave, what does that do since they've trained for the last three days out here on Robin Lake, coming really at the ramp in the opposite direction? Does that do anything? Well, Jason Seals is going to be the guinea pig, and he, you're right. He is going to have to figure out his cutting pattern and timing and do it within three jumps. The other guys are going to be watching. Well, that looks pretty oh, good. Oh, yes. That looks pretty good. Yeah, and, and you know, you can see the wind at work under his skis. He didn't handle it real well, though. Did you see the skis move up and down? Yeah. 247. He has a personal best of about 258. He's going to press a little harder. He certainly will now adjust his cut from what he learned from jump number one. He's such a stylish jumper. Good form into the base. Oh, and look at this. He holds his skis perfectly still. Wow. Oh, that's a great jump. Oh, and he just milked that float for as much as he could get. 266, and that is the benchmark for the day. 266. Here comes Jarrett Llewellyn. He is the world record holder at 299, and he did that jump in a headwind like this. Oh, oh man. Look, look at the extension. I mean, he went over the ramp like it wasn't there, and then he's, he just let his body extend off the top and floated forever. It was like he was shot out of a cannon. There's his wife, Britta, a little coaching. She's saying, get your white ski around in front of the left ski. Don't let it drag behind. 279 by Jarrett Llewellyn. And 74 miles an hour. He's now the new leader, third and final jump. Bringing the handle in, great start. All on the right ski into the base of the ramp, and then he explodes. He got that hand tucked behind him to be a little more aerodynamic. Was it good enough to go further than 279? His wife certainly thinks, though. Freddy Krueger is hoping not. Oh. He's waiting on the dock. 284. What a terrific jump. Scott Ellis knows he has his work cut out for him, but he was standing here watching, and he is so excited to be jumping in a headwind. What an opportunity. Oh, no, no, he had problems. His timing was off. Danny was a little too early. He had to let up through the wakes. That will not do it. Uh, he is obviously disappointed, too. 
Tough, tough jump for Scotty Ellis. Oh, and he knows it. You train for this moment here at the Masters. 263, nope. Jarrett Llewellyn, that man is still our leader. 284, that's the mark to beat. Here comes Freddy Krueger. Defending ski flying champion, he has done it here. Oh, and he has a terrific, explosive spring. And there it is. Whoa, his skis are also wavering a little up there. Did you see him? They're fluttering in the wind. He's having trouble keeping them flat. Uh, look, she says just a little bit further. No, she, and she, she's saying, but do the same thing. She's saying the wind's the same. Do the same thing. Cut at the same place. Let's see, 284. That's the mark to be 276. Oh, he is close. 276. All right, everything's got to be perfect here. He's got to build speed all the way to the base and hold it. Oh, great lift. Is it going to be far enough? No, that is just short. And Jared Llewellyn is our winner. Jared, a Masters title. It's been a while. It's been a long while. You know, last year I had came in and I couldn't jump. I had broken ribs trying to go through the motions. And coming this, I, even I come in three weeks early and I had a sore ankle and didn't get the time on the ramp. Was mis, you know, didn't know what I was doing. I was second guessing myself and. Britta and Tony are, you know, talking in my ears, trying to, you know, just just remember how you used to do it. And I just like that set was the first set. I actually, I was I was really pumped, and I I want to go back out there and you know try to go farther because that was unreal, and we haven't had those conditions. And Britta, you're a ski flyer, so you can really appreciate what he just did and what he's been through. Oh yeah, I sure can. Even though you know I've had little time on the water compared to him, but it's amazing to me. Like even you know I only go 41 miles an hour, and the boys go 45. I cannot imagine doing that. I just I cannot imagine how they can do it. No idea. Yeah. Congratulations! A great victory for you, Jared. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 2002, a year to be remembered here at the Masters. For Dave Benzel and Jeff Barton, I'm Dan Debenham. We'll see you next year.